Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'll do that. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. I was going to wait till after church to do this. Everybody be seated for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. But the cameras are rolling. Need to know this, though. When you give as an individual, you don't need to let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. That's right. That's it. That's it. I know a lot of people gives big money and it don't go nowhere because they tell everybody about it and That's talk right. about it. But right. as a body of believers, it needs to be seen publicly. Yeah. And I have, I actually got, two months ago, God put something on my heart. We had decided we was going to sell this church van our church bus at lunch one day with the board it, we were talking about what we need to do and we thought it's wisdom to buy a van probably still is it's probably in our future but about two and a half months ago God dropped it in my heart and I'm a slow prayer especially when it has to do with God's money I take my time to make sure I'm hearing him and I submitted it to partners board members and Linda Jane I want you to come up here and just stand right there I'll pace around but you can't follow me anywhere you out even though you've got a brand new knee <laughs> we like new knees everybody thank God for new knees Thank you, Lord, for brand new news. Don't do that move, you don't tell me. God has seen your faithfulness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He saw your tears. He saw your wrong decisions and your repentant heart to make them right. Yeah. What God has put on my heart. I've talked to the board about it. We're all in agreement with it, but we sold that church bus. We got $1,600 out of it. I want you to take that $1,600, your little car. I want you to partner with Brad. He sells cars for a living, and we want you to take this money and your car and get you something better. And, and don't settle there. This is just a start. That's right. Yeah. But if we've got money in our bank accounts in the church and we got believers that's faithful like her that has needs, <coughs> it's a blight against us if we don't do our that's part right. and help them. But Amen. anybody Amen. wants to come up here and pray for her, pray at your Amen. seats. Amen. We want to bless you with a sixteen hundred dollar check. Yeah. Amen. Partner with him and get you a better ride. Yep. Yeah. Lord, bless our sister. Thank you for As we gave that word to Keith. Thank you for I say it to her too. Your best days are not behind you. Oh, but your future's bright. Lord, from the top of her head to the soul of her feet. We call her car in. You come to us now. Oh, you're going to run good. You're going to work nice. You are just going to be a blessing. That's what we name in her car is blessing. Blessing in the name of Jesus. You show up and appear. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What's happening? What to somebody's next in line? Yeah. Oh, and your brother, or your sister gets their needs met. You you didn't lose out. You just moved up a step. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. 
If you are out there and you are having trouble with infection, I want to minister to you right now. Do like the old time TV preachers did. Hold your hand up toward that computer screen, that laptop screen. In Jesus' name. He was wounded for your transgressions. Bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was laid on Him. And with His stripes, you are healed. In Jesus' name. Well, last week I told you we was going to continue with the series of Ministry of the King and go into a prophet. Well, I lied to you. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm going to hear Brother Copeland say this. I, mean, I just work here. <laughs> I'm not the boss. <laughs> the boss has given me a new assignment. We're going to start a series on honoring God's Word. But you all know how I announce my messages. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, Faith begins, Faith begins. Where, the where the will of God is known. Look at your other neighbor and say, Faith begins, Faith begins. Where, the where the will of God is known. Now turn to the 119th Psalm. And then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 8. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for each and every precious individual that's in this church today and everyone that views this Facebook Live and watches the recap. Grant us hearing ears so that we can hear what the Spirit would say to us today and give us tender hearts, Lord. Our best days are not behind us. That's right. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Psalms 119 verse 89. Faith begins where the will of God is known forever. Everybody say, that's a long time. A long time. That's yesterday. That's today. And that is tomorrow. That is tomorrow. Forever. Forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, come on. Yeah, there is no disputing the holy written word of God. There is no argument to it. There is no yeah, but there is none of that. His word is forever settled. Amen. In heaven. You know what our job is? To get what's settled in heaven. Manifested here in the earth. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Come on, that, that book was not given to you to decorate your coffee table. It was right. not given to you right. to look like a churchy person no. carrying it on Friday nights and Sunday morning. Right. It was given to you so you could read it, so you could hear it, so you could meditate it, and you could speak it. Those are the things we are supposed to do with God's Word in our personal life. Hear it, say it. Read it and yeah. meditate it. Yes. Amen. Now turn to Matthew 8. I am excited about this message. <laughs> Starting with verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, a great multitude followed him. I'm reading from Matthew 8, verse 1, now verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Uh, another place. Now, I, I stole that faith begins where the will of God is known from Brother Hagin. <clears throat> but I'm going to add Brother Todd's part to it out of this verse. If thou wilt... Thou can. 
There's two places that faith starts at, where the will of God is known yeah. and where the willingness of God is known. Amen. Yeah. There's only two questions yeah. every person on earth asks about anything they are seeking of God. Will you do it or can you do it? That's the two questions we got to overcome. Those of us that knows he's can, we've got to figure out, uh, will he do what he can do? And those that knows he will. Come on, what, is, what does the church teach us? They want excuses. Church is full of excuses. God's going to heal me someday, Brother Todd. Oh, I believe it. You ain't never going to get healed. No, that's right. I know it's tight. I know that's rough. Yeah. You are never going to get healed. Look, faith is a substance of things hoped for, but it starts out with now faith is. Faith always is. It's never going to be. It's never going to come. It's never in the future. Faith is always right at this moment now. You believe you receive when you pray, not when the answer comes. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. God's looking for people that's just flat out to going to take him at his word. Yes. Oh, we're mountain folks, old timers around here. We understand what giving your word to somebody is. Yes. Used to, there was houses exchanged hands yes. and land and cows and horses around this area from two old men standing out by a fence and they give each other their word yes. and shook hands on it. Yes. We honor that, but how come you think when God sent this book that He is not standing at that fence and, and you depend on Him to do what He said He'd do? That's it. Oh, yeah. He is, God is not a man that he should lie. That first verse I read you, if it's written in this book, if it's in these holy pages, it is forever settled. Once he said it, he meant it, and it will come to pass. Yes. Yes. But you've got to believe it. Yeah. The greatest thing we can do at the body of Christ is honoring his written word. Yep. And, and honoring something ain't just occasionally spending time with it. See, I honor my dad. And right now at this season in his life, I ain't hooked a boat up since June. Because I honor him. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be with him whatever time I've got he's got left. Well, every breath is on this planet. I want to see him draw it. Any words he has to say. There's times right now he talks foolish. He'll have a dream and think it's reality. Do you think I rebuke him? No, me and him the other night was working for Southeast Coal Company and Dad didn't feel like going in on his shift and he wanted me to go. Cover for him. You know what I did? I got up, put my clothes on in the middle of the night and told him I'll go cover for you and I went out the front door. Amen. See, most of you would have been spending all your time sitting there telling him, are oh, you talking foolish? He's talking, and I'm hearing it. Yes. Amen. Stayed outside the door three or four minutes and come back in, and he wanted to know, was that a rough shift? <laughs> yeah. How come we as believers are not, not that anxious? To understand, know, and flow in God's written word. Yeah. 
He's given it to us. We've got CDs, MP3s, VHS. We've got yeah. YouTube. My Facebook Live's on there all the time for everybody. There is no excuse for a believer in the United States. You can talk about this country all you want to, how bad it is. Yeah. It's always been bad since the garden. Yeah. Yeah. Brother killing brother in the garden, but we want to act like that uh, a few years ago because we had certain leadership in this country that America went to hell in a handbasket. Come on. Yeah. Oh, but Brother Todd, we're, we're eat up with this and that. They're making wrong. They've always been. The government is not supposed to be the ones that determines anything that goes on in this nation. The kingdom of God is here. Yeah, Amen. 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 Think about this. The United States is the only country ever founded in rebellion to their desire to worship God the way they want to. You think he takes that lightly? There's more missionaries sent out of this nation. There's more money flows out of this nation. We do more good. But just like that blabbity mouth neighbor you got, everybody likes to talk about the bad. Preachers out there this morning saying, if God don't judge America, he's going to have to repent to Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on, y'all heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I can tell you where judgment begins. Yeah, yeah. And it starts at the house of God. God ain't interested in judging no priests and presidents that ain't really in the kingdom of God. His judgment begins with us. And that Sodom and Gomorrah stuff, God didn't burn them to the ground because there was homosexual activity there, as the church would like to tell you. Yes, it was there. It was bad. Yes. It was so bad that they was trying to rape angels. Yes, yes. But I'm an honest preacher. Your addiction to Pepsi and Mountain Dew and Diet Coke and Little Debbie's is just as wrong as the homosexual sin. Yeah. If you're guilty of one part, you're guilty of nine. Now, I know it's nasty. Yeah, it gives you the willies. I've never understood how a man could get a craving for another big old hairy man. <laughs> That's a temptation. I've been tempted. I've done a lot of stupid things. I ain't never been tempted for that. <laughs> but uh, every time you see that kind of stuff preached, it's political. Yeah. <clears throat> For four years, the preachers preaching it are opposing this man, and when the new guy comes in, they praising him, and the group that was opposed him, now they preaching that Sodom and Gomorrah doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Let me give you a hint, church. Don't believe the news, neither side of it. That's right. Yeah. It's very simple. You got Fox, very pro Trump. And you got CNN and MSNBC that they all day long they bash him. I'll tell you your job as the church, and it was the same when Obama was in there. We are supposed to pray yeah, for right. those in authority over us. Yes, we yeah. are. Right. You're not praying about them when you're calling them evil and stupid and crooked. Yeah. That's true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yes. A prayer of faith would be somebody that stands there and says, Lord, have mercy on my president for the flesh decisions he's made. Give him wisdom. Let him hear your voice. Let him yeah. see you in dreams. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it says the leaders of the earth are on God's shoulders. 
I'm saying they're on his head. Something's on his shoulder, you're carrying it. That's right. That's right. He carried the world. Yeah. That's who he is. That Sodom and Gomorrah stuff, you had a prophet that when God does nothing except he reveals it first to his servants, a prophet, that he's going to destroy them. And not one time did that prophet bring up the sins of that city. That ain't the only place that had sin on the earth at that time. The prophet brought up, Lord, if there's ten righteous men in that city, will you spare it? And, and shockingly, what God said to him was, if I can find ten righteous people, I will spare that city. I came to tell you today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My feet is on the United States of America. He's not going to destroy it. Amen. That's the truth. You just think their sin's worse than your sin. You need to figure out it's their sin. And none of your business. That's <laughs> true. Ah, uh, hard preachers don't like this. Uh, Brother Todd, are you taking a... Hey, we're all guilty. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I tell you what I hope. I hope the tattoos show up in this church Amen. to where you're Amen. I hope the feminine men show up in here and Amen. make you uncomfortable sitting yes. beside you. Yeah. Absolutely. I hope the girl shows up that you say hello sir to her because you don't even know that it's a woman. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Do we have the answer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have his word? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Jesus was tempted in every like manner as we are. Any yeah. temptation you ever faced, he was tempted to do that, but he walked upright. And, and it hurt up the church when I say this, but he was tempted with some big old hairy man. Yeah. Oh, you can just feel. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Every temptation, he stood and he faced it and he defeated it and rendered it powerless. The only way I can overcome my temptations is he faced them and he defeated them. Yeah. Yeah. It says, and when he was come down from the mountain, a great multitude followed him. God told me when I started this church, focus on church health. Yes. Yes. Not growth. Right. Yes. I've been trying in that. Mm -hmm. It was a Friday night service. I preached to Lynn. Mm -hmm. As a preacher, you won't ever see it full, but as a minister that's walked with God a while, yeah. I tell you all, if your family comes up in any way, I don't want you to yeah. Your home is more important than your church. Church ain't going to work right if the home ain't right. The church ain't going to flow right if the house ain't right. If there's chaos in your homes, all you're going to do is bring chaos in my church. I want you with your kids, your husbands, your wives, your grandkids, your moms and dads. Yeah. Amen. But as a preacher, preaching to Lynn is faithfulness. Now, I have a cameraman. He don't count. <laughs> <laughs> I won't get that straight. There's two here, but he was doing He, he was running his camera. But, but the story about that is my buddy had been trying to get me to do my PayPal stuff. Put it on there. So there's, there's people contacting my friends asking how do we give and help Brother Todd. He kept saying, you can even put that on there. And me and him pastored each other over the years. Now that sounds weird, but there's been times we've rebuked each other, we've cried with each other, we've laughed with each other, and he said, I'm telling you, put your PayPal address on your Facebook lives. 
I ain't going to get much of an offer in me and Lynn here. <laughs> I had to have $1,500 that Monday. Desperate. Our family, we messed up a checkbook. Just had needs. I put my PayPal on there and I preach like it's 5000 here. Give an altar call, you know, Lynn answered it. Lynn <laughs> <laughs> got saved again, got healed again, got baptized in the Holy Ghost again. <laughs> and Satan will talk to you. When you're a preacher that don't do anything else but preach and have a little bit of rental income, Satan will talk to you that the renters ain't going to pay and only Lynn's there. Your offering's not going to be that good tonight. Brother can't do but so much. Now he does good. I'm not putting Lynn down. That's right. That's right. I never eat a meal with him and he don't stick money in my pocket. My grass is freshly cut because God bless Lynn with a lawnmower. But I'm needing fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, we're, we're, it looked bad when my preacher's family's bouncing a checkbook. <laughs> well, I grudgingly put my PayPal on my Facebook Live that night. Preach my head off, like I said. Walking out to church, I looked down at my phone. Somebody put $3,200 on my paper. <laughs> I, I don't know if you realize it, but in this size church, $3,200 is a big offering. Yeah. If everybody brings their neighbor and shows up, yeah. and we preach to Lynn, and God meets my needs. Yeah. Amen. 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 What y'all don't know is the people I talk about, Scotty Kilburn, Danny Ray Reynolds, we started out preaching to each other. With a hairbrush. That's why I can't do them tie tack mics. I've got a you know, habit. <laughs> oh, I, I stood with a hairbrush and preached, and every time I preached, Danny Ray and Scotty gave an offering. They got saved. I filled up my bathtub with water and baptized them in my bathtub. Yeah. You always wanted to get in front of Danny Ray, though. Danny Ray has got a super memory. We'd, we'd order, we'd put our money together, and we did everything together. We'd go to the Goodwill, and it took all three of us to buy a suit. <laughs> now, I told you about that suit. Danny Ray's this tall, and me and Scotty's this tall, and that suit fit me and Danny Ray both. <laughs> Smelled like old men and cigars. <laughs> yeah. it was, we didn't have sense enough to take it, we didn't have the money to get it dry clean. But if you didn't preach before Danny Ray, you was destroyed because we would order tapes. That's all we did. 24 hours a day, we found a cassette player that would turn over and we listened and we listened and we was ordering tapes. And if you ordered, we was ordering Hagen, Shambach, and Parsley. Danny Ray listened to a Rod Parsley tape one time. And preach that CD, that case cassette, then preach that cassette word for word. He could even cough when Rod Parsley <laughs> coughs on that tape. And we were stealing things from them preachers. When you start out preaching, you don't know anything. You've got to take something that somebody else said and use it. And if Danny Ray got the hairbrush first, I didn't have nothing to say that night because he don't preach it all. <laughs> What are you saying, Dolly? Rest of the young boys on earth back then was out on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights uh, chasing after girls, uh, drinking out of a bottle. But us three boys uh, was in my little cabin listening to the Word of God, laying hands on each other, baptizing each other, preaching to each other, yeah. listening to the Word. We were honored. Amen. Yes. People talked about us. Them boys is wildfire. We was. <laughs> we was. 
There's a story I tell that you all heard. Some of you ain't heard it. People on Facebook ain't. But you all got to realize it was you. I've never admitted that part, but Holiness Church lied to me and Danny Ray. They told us that the, in our mind, the Holiness Church was the bondage and long dresses, long sleeve shirts. Anybody that wasn't bondage, long dresses, long sleeve shirts wasn't Holiness. And the Holiness Church taught us that all the other churches, they called them charismatic. I don't care if they were a Baptist. They weren't using the term charismatic like you all do. Anybody that wasn't holiness was a charismatic church. And they would say, all them charismatics thinks about is dancing and shouting and running the aisles. Well, now, we, we was members at Clayhoe, and the first lick of the guitar, there was 25 boys running the aisles, dancing. We, we, we was wildfire. We went to Richlands, Virginia, 6,000 people in the first lick of the song. So me and Danny Ray takes off running. And we didn't know that holiness crowd believed that you don't move till the Spirit of God moves on you. Yeah. Well, my old sister's shaking her head. What they're telling you is God's got them by the ponytail. <laughs> shaking them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they're telling you now. Brother, I don't dance until God moves my feet. <laughs> now, come on, we, we like that. It makes us look big, makes us sound spiritual. But we knew better. Clyde and Ruth taught us that the best kind of praise is a sacrifice. And they taught us that David danced, but he did it with all his might. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yes, he did. We was dancers. <laughs> it was back when you all were over behind the gymnasium. They've been telling us all them charismatics <laughs> wants to do is run and dance and shout. And we we we've been getting sit down in the holiness churches, turning the mic off. We were in Whitesburg, and there was a lady that's heart had grew outside of her chest. Birth defect. And she comes up, and we're full of fire, vigor, and confidence. And they bring her up, and, and she explains, I've got a birth defect, and rudely let us see it. It's in a place you really didn't need to be seeing, but uh, she showed the whole church a little bit, and I slapped her in the chest, and God had to heal her, or I'm going to kill her. <laughs> That's how stupid I was back then. Now, you all heard the version. I saw Ruth's got the person out of the wheelchair. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Ruth said to that woman in that wheelchair, I say unto thee, arise and walk. I'm going to be like Ruth. I go to the next wheelchair person. I get them by the hand. I do what Ruth did. I say unto thee, in the name of Jesus, arise and walk. And I pull that fella out of that wheelchair and like to kill the paraplegic man. <laughs> Fell on top of me. Now, I don't know if you ever dealt with somebody paralyzed, but they're hard to get in and out of the chair, especially when a dumb preacher jerks them out of the wheelchair and they don't get healed and they're laying on top of you in front of the church. So we didn't have a lot of sense. But God can do something with people that honors His Word and ain't too smart. You slap that woman on the chest and that heart went back into her chest. Wow. All the holiness sisters around her start that Pentecostal shout and you want to know what the pastor did? He come and took a mic out of my hand and said, we're not going to be imitating you. I've heard this Benny Hinn in this church. I didn't know who Benny Hinn, when I was holiness, I was. I found out they ain't. They taught against TVs. And they hid their televisions in a closet. When I talked against it, I busted mine up in the yard. I don't know who Benny Hinn was. You all heard it, but there's people out there that needs to hear this. Uh, uh, loudly, that pastors, you're not going to imitate. 
imitate Benny Hinn and it confused his church. They're wanting to rejoice over the power of God moving in this lady's life and they're escorting me out of that hole in this church and it caused the conversation. I got confused. Yeah. I go home to my mom. Thank God for good Baptist mommies. It's got sense enough not to believe stupid hole in this doctrine. Yeah, that's right. She still had her TV no matter how much I talked about it. <laughs> I said, Mom, there's some preacher that they say I'm imitating. I don't know who he is. His name's Benny Rooster. <laughs> Benny Rooster. <laughs> Find and get me a video of him. I want to see what I'm doing. <laughs> so we did things crazy. And in your all's church is where I had bought a hundred packs. The lifesavers, not no little roll. I bought one of them big Ziploc bags with the name the life, lifesavers, and I put in our miracle coat. My night to wear it. We took turns. Well, we, after we got to watching Benny Rooster, we, we seen a couple of videos of him taking his coat and swinging it in the power of God move. Well, that's a miracle coat. It fits a little bitty short man and a big tall fat man. That thing's already got power. It's like Elijah's mantle. <laughs> yeah. Benny Rooster can swing his coat. We can ours. The holiness church is stopping our shout. They're stopping our prayer lines. It's so confusing. You gotta wear white in some of them. You can't wear short sleeves in some of them. Your hair gotta be up in some of them. Y'all heard all this, but we're here in them charismatics. All they want to do is be wild about God. So we're gonna go and we visit you all. <laughs> it's amazing that I'm pastoring this church. <laughs> You all had a good light system on that stage. You dimmed the lights and Benny Hinn music. Now, I didn't know enough about Benny Rooster to know that was his music. Man, it was just soft. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. heard such a thing as that. <laughs> what we heard was songs that literally was so, well, you got to move. You got to move. Now when the Lord, he gets ready, you got to move. You got to move. Put old Daniel in the lion's den. He had nobody to be his friend. But when the Lord, he got ready, old yeah. Daniel moved. And we moved. <laughs> well, you told us preachers quit lying. The charismatics don't know how to dance. <laughs> they never heard you got to move. Most of them's got a granny that acted that way, but they think they know more about the word now than she did, so they don't yeah, act like her right. anymore. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, we heard your all's hallelujah. <laughs> we thought y'all was wild as us, and I looked at Danny Ray and I said, let's show us charismatic church how holy this man gets in. That's what we call it. Mm -hmm. Dancing, running, and leaping was getting in. I get up, I take off to the front of the church right in the middle of dim lights and hallelujah. <laughs> I'm up there going, Woo! Well, the ushers decide that they're going to be nice to me, but they're going to call me and come over and get an arm on each of my arms and <laughs> calm me down. They didn't realize I was a big old bear of a man strong as an ox. <laughs> now, at Clay Hole, if I'm up there doing my dance, my brother come up and got under my arm, he come up there to dance with me. He didn't come to stop me. I thought these little fellers was wanting to dance with me, so I just picked them up. Yeah. <laughs> Dater ain't smarter than me. He knew they was trying to sit me down. So Dater ain't comes up to participate in the dance and brings the miracle coat. 
And Dare had just got out of the military fight a buzzsaw. I literally, I know him before Christ. I watched him flat footed. A truck go by us on the road in Hazard, Kentucky. And Danny Ray takes off in a full blown sprint, runs down the driver's side of that truck, opens the door and pulls the driver out of that truck. Truck wrecks over on the side of the road and Danny Ray stomps at me. <laughs> so we ain't too <laughs> lightweight fellas. <laughs> Danny Ray military trained and fit his whole life and I'm strong as a bear and don't know it and Danny grabs our miracle coat <laughs> knows they're trying to sit me down and he thinks I'll swing it in these people's face like Benny Rooster and knock them all down in the power of God I want to defend my brother Todd I bought the big ziplock bag of ice savings and put in the pocket Danny Ray'd swing that coat every time it went around 25, 30 lifesavers was flying out, hitting that congregation. And they all look real Pentecostal then. Everybody's going. <laughs> and some of them in the floor praying. And some of them getting up. And Danny Ray thinks the coat's bringing revival. <laughs> and now I'm dancing my ushers and I realize he's shooting lifesavers at everybody. <laughs> was you all. Some of you probably got scars and more wounds from the miracle coat and lifesavers. So that's the first time I've admitted I am now pastor in the church. So please tore up your service. We, like we, sh we showed you all how Holy Ghost anointed holiness me and dances. Why are you telling all that? You don't have to do everything right yeah. if you honor his word. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly what we did was wrong. Everywhere we went, we was out of order. We was not honoring any ministry gift we sat under. We thought we knew more than they did. We were better preachers than them. We were more than that's what we thought. Everybody starts out in ministry, you kind of go through that. It's exciting and thrilling when the power of God touches your life and He does something big in it. Yes. You get to thinking it's you. Mm -hmm. Hot and good day. <laughs> Y'all saw my pretty tiny coat. Yeah. <laughs> Don't swing it. You know what just happened? Check for life. I'm holding the skin. <laughs> you know, this is what I look like then. You know why that pastor thought I was imitating Benny Hinn? Because of that gold necktie. He didn't believe him. He also said I was imitating Miami Vice. And I had my mom record that and realized real fast they took me in bikinis and that show. I don't even be watching that. <laughs> I'll just watch Benny Rooster sing his coat. <laughs> But in all that foolishness, there's a motorcycle graveyard at the top of the mountain in my holler. They, they've changed the tombstone now, but at one time it was this big, wicked, ugly looking bat. Boys, you like to go up there in the middle of the night and scare yourself looking at that evil looking tombstone. We'd go up there all the time and get two chicken to get close to it. <laughs> Every Memorial weekend, the motorcycle gang comes up there and honors their friend. They put black flowers on his grave, and I'm not knocking them. Some of my best, I like motorcycle people. Some of my best friends are. I got some of the roughest people you can imagine in your eyes on Facebook. Motorcycle men that text me and pray for my grandbaby. Yeah. Well, they was up there. And it scares some of the ladies in the holler when 50 motorcycles come to look to holler and they talk about all the sinfulness and wickedness. You know, we talk about everybody else's sins, but 
Me and Dana, I thought, we're the men with Benny Rooster's anointing, and we're going to go up there amongst them, and there are 75 bikers up there drinking beer, celebrating, and me and Dana gets out doing holiness dances in the leaves of a graveyard, and Dana slipped and fell, but the name Holy Roller, he just rolled and rolled in the leaves. <laughs> you want to know what happened? Two holiness men scared 75 bikers to where they didn't want to do whatever drug we was on. <laughs> But every day, listening to the Word, fill up a notebook, get a new one, listening to the Word, listening to the Word, crying. And we, we get a new tape series, and we were so excited about that tape series that tears would be running down our face as we was entering that cabin. What else are we going to learn about God from this tape series? What is it that we don't know that in 60 minutes of listening to this, we're going to know it? Yeah. How long has it been since you was that excited about a preaching CD? We freaked the mailman out back then. Poor old Bortus. <laughs> I don't know if he's seen us, but we couldn't wait. So we'd get out there behind the mailbox in the weeds. <laughs> Hoping the preacher tapes coming in the mail today. You want to know God, how God uses such foolishness? Uh, and, and you want to know why those three of us? Uh, there's about 15 preachers I could tell you about uh, that was in our group. Uh, but there's three of us uh, that are still going, that are still growing and still learning. And it's the three that totally immerse themselves uh, in God's Word. Yeah. Divorce hadn't destroyed us. Bankruptcy hasn't took us out. Amen. Being stupid in church and about killing you all with lifesavers. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Honor His Word and the stupid choices you make in life and the wrong decisions you make. His Word is forever settled yeah. in heaven. Yeah. You will overcome yeah. every wrong choice, every bad decision. Amen. Yeah. It says, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. I started this out telling about preaching to Lynn. You want to fill this church up, get the name and presence and power of Jesus yeah. lifted up in your life. Yeah. You want people following you. Yeah. They follow the Jesus in you. Yes. 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 Ain't nobody needs to be following Brother Todd. You're going to find out that sometime last week I needed mercy. Oh, you're full of power in the pulpit. Oh. I don't wear this at the house. That's right. But if you follow Jesus, the crowd comes, and that's what happened. He come out of the mountain, and I get a picture of it. Jesus has been, a, and I preached what led up to this story Friday. This is where he told about you liken unto a wise man if you build your house on a rock. He goes into a mountain to pray. Anytime you see Jesus heading to the hills, he's seeking God. We can't pray now if the air conditioner ain't comfortable. Yeah. If the desk ain't straightened up, ink pens ain't lined up like they're supposed to be, we're hindered. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I was the same way, but when I started going, I loved coming to this church and pray because I like to walk and pray. Y'all see it? Even in the worship service, I'm a pacer. This is how I pray. I get this little brown book. And my confessions, which are right there, and I do this. 
I do what Jesus said. I speak to the mountain of debt and bills in my family's life and I command them to be gone. Yeah. I'm not moved by what I see. My blood sugar is normal. My feet are like hind feet. My urinary tract and bladder and kidneys function like God created. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They make me a little bitty desk in there. And, I got, and sometimes I get in the mood and they can tell you, I get the tables out and make me a big desk. Yeah. I sit right there, throw all my trash over here. She's trying to say to pick up a lot of trash sometimes. <laughs> but when this happened with my dad, I'm not here that much anymore. I'm sitting in a recliner beside of a couch. And you know what happens most of the time? I turn the word on. My poor little mommy gets in the mood to talk. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about her day. My little pup. It brings me chewed up pop bottles, lays them in my lap, old raggedy Snoopy dolls, and it's chewed up, lays them in my lap, barks. Wanting me to throw a pop bottle and a Snoopy doll. I'm trying to be spiritual. Getting the word. You know what? I turn on Brother Hayden, Brother Copeland, and I throw a Snoopy doll. I throw a pop ball. I listen to an old man tell me about, uh, I need to fill in for him itself. It's not an atmosphere that you're greatly in control of. We, we teach, we think today that fog machines and lights bring the presence of God into a building. I saw Jerry Savelle a little while back. He had to ask him to turn the lights up. He couldn't read his Bible. It was so dim. Yeah. Now, I'm not against lights and fog machines, but the power of God does not show up because you're comfortable and because your ink pens are lined up and the sound is just right. Great men of God bring great power and turmoil. They wrote that book in a jail cell bleeding against the wall. Amen. They praised God and got out of jail at the midnight hour. Yes. 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 Too comfort minded in today's society. Amen. You lose your remote. You act like you're crippled and can't get up and walk and change the channel. Yeah. yeah. Look two hours for a remote. Yeah. You could have watched two shows. Yeah. <laughs> Flip a couch upside down, ball the kids out. <laughs> Why? Because you're too lazy to get up and walk over and push a button in. When we growed up, I was the remote. That's right. Yeah. My dad had three or four channels, and to get them channels, I literally had to walk two miles up a mountain with this little square wire. He had an antenna on top of the mountain to get them channels. So yeah. I had to run that wire to that antenna, and every time it'd storm or a deer or a skunk or something would run through there, it knock the wire down. TV wouldn't work, and Dad would say, "Go walk that wire and see where it's down at." And, and if he wanted to watch Andy Griffith, and it wasn't on Andy Griffith's channel, boy, go put that on channel three. Boy, that's too loud. Turn that. Off. I was the remote. Yeah. 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 I was not only the satellite repairman that run the line. I was the remote. Yeah. 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 Jesus went to the mountain to pray. We got a lot of mountains around here. You need to get in better shape. Walk in the mountains and pray. You not only get in shape spiritually, but walking in the mountains will get you in shape physically yep. too. He come down out of the mountain and it says a multitude followed him and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Leprosy represents 
And you can hear it in what he says. He, he sat up to redneck it. He is worshiping Jesus. You want to get the attention of God, learn how to worship yes. at the foot of a mountain. Yes. Yes. Not in church. Learn how to worship yep. in your yard, cutting right. your grass, yep. eating your supper. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Amen. This man was a leper, and the Bible's very specific about leprosy. First off, if you thought you had leprosy, you had to go to the priest and let him diagnose you with leprosy. <laughs> It's never a good idea to let the preachers diagnose what's the matter with you. <laughs> never. Never. <laughs> no. And I'm a preacher, and I know that, 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 that he, this, it was in the law to be diagnosed with leprosy. You go to the preacher, and you know what the preacher would decide? You've got to tear your clothes. The first thing religion ever does with anybody is start messing with their clothes. Well. <laughs> you want to know how deep religion is and how stacked it is? Look at how they think they have to dress. Look at these poor Muslim women. Only thing showing is their eyes. Yeah. Come on. It's a truth. Yeah. Every denomination you know of, they some of it thinks this morning if everybody ain't got on a suit and tie, yeah. they're not honoring God. And there's others that thinks if you showed up in a suit and tie, you're stuck up and stiff and too good for all of us. Preachers always, uh, they don't know what to do. They don't have the answer. So the first, first thing they did to the leper is you got to tear your clothes so, so everybody can see you have leprosy. And then they said, you've got to cover your top lip. Well. <laughs> yeah. What does that have to do? Ain't nobody can see you smile. You ain't got nothing to smile about if you're a leper and there ain't nobody can really hear what you got to say. The church are always, the religious crowd are always trying to take your smile mm -hmm. and silence your voice. Absolutely. Now, come on, they've been telling you yeah. women for years you ain't got no right to get up and talk. And yeah. If you read that verse that they use on that, what it says is... If your women learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home and remain silent in church. First thing the religious crowd did is they pulled that remain silent in church, <laughs> kept it over the top of your mouth, and said, you women can't say anything in church. Yep, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to hush and get in submission. It's usually some arrogant man that uh, he feels like he not only can dominate uh, his wife, uh, but he can dominate yours. <laughs> but what that verse? Glory, girls, go ahead. Give me all wants to learn anything. What was happening is the preacher was saying things that the girls did not understand. They didn't let them girls go to school back then. And the preacher would say something that needed redneck, and I don't think he was as skilled as your pastor. <laughs> Like a God-given gift. <laughs> but man, he would be talking about a how the son of a high tubber. He, he would be going through the lineage of Jesus. You think them begats ain't important? When you skip out, need to read them. Mm -hmm. If you read them, you will find out that there's a lady called Rahab the Harlot. That's right. 
Did it make that? Yeah. Rahab the whore. Yeah. It never calls her anything else. It don't hide from it. It don't cover it up. It talks about Rahab the harlot. And if you look at that lineage, she is Jesus' great, 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 great grandmother. Jesus' great, great, great grandmother was a whore. <laughs> And God used her mightily. Yes, he did. But them ladies in that church, uh, he would be talking about that. And, and if you talk about Rahab the harlot, uh, they would stick their hand up. And what did you say about Rahab the yep. And they were asking questions. He said, a high oil of a high tub had a son of Benadab. What's a high oil and what's a high tub, sir? And they were interrupting the minister gift. Yeah. yeah. That's what it says. Yeah. If she has a question, yeah. let her wait till she gets home, ask her husband, he's got to go to school, or be silent. What that verse is saying is quit interrupting the preacher while he's trying to talk, asking him questions. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You know, I shook y'all up. Y'all ain't over that great, 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 great. <laughs> <laughs> I still soak that in. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, I, I've heard other preachers say that recently, but I got that revelation 15, 16 years ago. A little broken girl. Devastated. Church hurt. Come to me. Said I've, I've, I've been a whore, and the church won't have me. Will you minister to me? How do you feel about it? And that come up in me. Mm -hmm. Right, have the harlot. Yes. Right. I said, sis. That's right. You in good company. Yeah. I said, would you believe that Jesus and his great, 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 great grandmother was a whore too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it set her free. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean. Amen. <laughs> this leper goes to the preacher, cover your mouth, tear your clothes. Anybody that comes around you, and you Walmart people are like this, Walmart's got a rule for their associates called the 10-foot rule. Now, do they follow it? No. They're too beat down. They're too aggravated. They're too frustrated. Sometimes when you work in that business, the last thing you want to do is a customer to come up and talk to you because you've been threatened and beat up all day. Mm -hmm. They've got a rule, though, called the 10-foot rule. Whenever you come within 10 foot of anybody, you are to smile and say hi and greet them. Mm -hmm. Now, we used to really, really do that. It made for a good atmosphere. Everybody felt important. You learned about your customers. A leper had a six foot rule. Anytime you come within six foot of anybody and the priest has diagnosed you as a leper, covered your mouth, you tore your clothes, mm -hmm. you are supposed to walk around anybody that you come within six feet of, and if the wind's blowing, you can go in Leviticus 13 and find this stuff. If the wind's blowing that day, you've got to stay 150 feet away from anybody. The church is very, very good at dressing people, silencing their voice, and making them feel like they are not good enough to be close to us. That's real good. That's what they're doing on Sunday mornings. You're not worthy to get on our stage. Yes, yes, that's it. You want to know the moment I departed in my heart from the holiness movement was my daddy. Dad drunk liquor all the time and functioned. I started preaching. 
Old timers had honor, and I'm preaching about honor in the word today. Dad calls me to Southeast Coal Company to his little office and says, we need to talk. And I get over there, and he says, it ain't right to me to be drinking this liquor and my boy preaching. He said, put your hands on me and pray. I ain't going to drink no more. And he never touched another drop. You know, man, he didn't like, he didn't take shots. Dad turned the fifth up in the garden and drank it and yeah. throw the bottle down and keep hoeing until he got to the next fifth. Yeah. You don't quit that. No, no. Without the power of God right. moving on you. That's right. He's excited about church and we get this is why I preach it. Tradition of men makes God's a word of no effect. That was 20 some years ago, and you all know good and well, he got baptized just a Amen. month ago. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You can fix right, it. That's fine. I'm not shaking, brother. No, I just kicked off. It ain't going to record another. It ain't recording. This one here is recording. One of them recording. Take him to church. He's excited about God. He's loving watching me and Dan Ray leap and run, and he's sitting about where you are, and he's got on a wristwatch. And they literally preach that you could go to hell for your wedding bands and your wristwatches, and he was the only one in that church that had a watch on, and they set a trash can out and had a deliverance service to get rid of your jewelry, and that night I decided I'm not going to be weak with your holiness lies. Yes, I am crying out against you. You hurt. Yeah. Yes. 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 Hurt my dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He went from excited about God to, to I ain't going back into them churches anymore. Yeah. Yes. Imagine what a leper felt like. Yeah. I gotta cover my mouth. I'm Jeremy. I'm I'm not worthy to be around the church people. They, they don't need to hear what I gotta say. My clothes and I, I look different. I can't get close to them. If the wind's blowing, I gotta stay 150 feet away from them. And another thing the church will always do is they had to, before they got within that six feet of you. The church will always give you a wrong confession. It was law that they would go, unclean, unclean, unclean. We've got a world out there today that feels just like those lepers, that they're not worthy, that we've got a homosexual generation that thinks they're not wanted in our, I want you in my church. You probably live better than a lot of people preaching this morning. Amen. Amen. What did that feel like? They had a mandate. They had to live alone. Religion will try to dress you funny, silence your voice, not let you around them, not let you close to them, and make you say wrong things about yourself and tell you you're not worthy to be a part of us. You need to stay alone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they form leper colonies outside of the city. Leprosy was not only considered a disease of the flesh, it was considered a disease of the cloth. And I've never, I've never understood how we struggle with believing in prayer cloths. If sickness and can, disease can be transferred through cloth, yeah. uh, it's kind of uh, redneck thinking that the healing power of God can be transferred through a cloth. That's right. But it was considered that wherever that leper sat, nobody else was allowed to sit there. But it's a perfect picture of the lost, hurting, yes. bruised, and dying yes. world. Yes. They don't feel like us. They don't look like us. Yeah. They don't talk like us. They're not a part of us. Yeah. They don't think we want them around. They don't think they are welcome in our churches. That's true. Yes, that's true. Yes. <laughs> I'm unclean. I'm unclean. Oh, 
all day saying that, announcing that. Yeah. I'm show you something real powerful here. He worshiped him saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. He was so hurt. And he was so broken, he knew that Jesus could absolutely heal him, but he did not know if he would. Yeah. Yeah. We're causing that today. They, they think they've got to quit this before they come to church. Yeah. They've got to stop doing that. How many times I've got phone calls about, well, do I have to wear a dress if I come to your church? Yeah. They feel like they can, they've got to fix this. And that's what that man was going through. Jesus, I know you can help me, but I do not know if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we can answer those questions for the world, we'll have a move of God that can't be stopped. Amen. Amen. If we can get anybody to believe that he can, they won't be stopped. And better than that, if we can get people to believe he is willing to do it, there ain't no stopping a man that knows he can and he will. Why do I have all the great miracle stories? I know he can and I'm convinced he will. I put and put and put and put the Word in me. My message to you is get in the Word. Yes. Yes. Immerse yourself in yes. it. Yes. Amen. Anytime you're wondering if He can or if He will, you need to get in the Word. Yes. Because He will. Yes. Whatever He has done for one, He will do for all. We got people in this church getting new vehicles. Thank you, Jesus. Get yours. Yeah. Yeah. My God ain't interested in that stuff. I beg to differ. When Jesus showed up in the city, he requested you all get me a donkey that ain't nobody ever rode on. Yeah. 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 He wasn't shopping at used car lot. Yeah. 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 No, he didn't want a donkey at somebody else's high end and being on the only one to do it. Come on, that's funny. But that was the transportation. If you want a verse to believe God for a vehicle, use the donkey verse. That's good. That's good. But they feel like, people feel like he's not interested in their car. Yeah. yeah. He's interested in a sparrow. Yes. Yeah. That yes. died in a wolf pen this morning. Yes. yes. He watched it fall to the ground. Yeah. He's got the very hairs of your head. Yeah. Numbered. No, yes. Yeah. Not counted. Yeah. He knows. Yes. He can tell us that number 438. Fell in Lynn's sink this number this morning. Yes. Yes. He's that concerned about Lynn. Yes. That hair is no longer on his head, and God's attention is drawn to it. Yes. That is love, and we need to get people understanding He loves you that much. Yes. He cares about you that Amen. much. Yes. Amen. It's not a question of will He? He loves you. Yeah. This man's question was, I know you can. You know he outdid most of the church with just that statement. Yeah. The ability to know he can. There's some of them that ain't even there. They, they want you to think miracle signs and wonders stopped right. when yeah. the last apostle died. Yeah. They'll quote to you, when that which is perfect is come, tongues yeah. will cease. Yeah. Knowledge will cease and they leave that out. They won't tell you that talking in tongues ain't valid for today because it ceased when the Bible came. That verse also says knowledge ceased. Yeah, it does. How come you won't preach that part? You want the tongues to stop, but has knowledge ceased? Yeah. 
Yes. Knowledge is increasing. Yes. All the stuff you saw on Star Trek when you was a kid is foolish looking now because yeah. we've not only got where they was at. I can walk in Walmart and the door does just like on Star Trek. Yeah. And my grocery store door opens. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That little phone they use. Yeah. We wouldn't even have it now. That's a flip phone. That thing's out of date. <laughs> Stock and Captain Kirk, you all need to go to Appalachian Waterless and get you a new phone. <laughs> Knowledge has not ceased. Yeah. Neither has the mighty miracle working power yeah. of the living God. Yeah. He's the same yesterday. It makes you wonder, can he and will he? That's yeah. right. That's right. Now, you don't realize what went on. This man's not supposed to get close to Jesus. Yeah. There's a crowd, a multitude that came to Jesus when he come off that mountain. This man's supposed to take a wide path around them. Sometimes they get so hurt and so desperate that they show up anyway. Yes. Hoping that the church has what they really need and what they're looking for. Yeah. They're risking everything by just yeah. showing up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Look at Jesus. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Church, that's way bigger than any of us has the ability. This is a man you're not supposed to sit on his couch. And Jesus, instead of doing he said it, but Jesus was showing him. You touch this man, you're automatically unclean and you got to go live in the leper colony and the first thing Jesus does is reaches out and touch him. Yeah. He's showing him, you are not an outcast to me. I don't find you filthy. I do not find you unclean. I want to touch you and be close to you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, if we're getting more That's good. It's an interesting book. That's good. Yes, it is. You don't get this stuff. It's powerful. Once on Sunday, Friday. Right. No. no, it's powerful. Him. Jesus, that man hadn't been touched since the priest diagnosed him as a leper. He hadn't felt a handshake. He hadn't felt an embrace. There's a world out there that's just hungering and thirsting for somebody to touch them with love. And we can't be thinking they're unclean and they're dirty and they're not worthy. We need to be the ones showing them that I'm willing to get close to you. I'm willing to touch you. I'm there. Big that Jesus, the whole crowd saw it. See, this is, if you study this out, this is Jesus' hometown. Mm -hmm. It's where he had his house. You know, a lot of them like to tell you he didn't have a house. Foxes don't have holes oh, and birds yeah. there yeah. don't have nests. They use that. If you read that story, the town they was evangelizing. Didn't have nowhere for him to sleep that night. He was a carpenter's son. <laughs> Houses wasn't no big deal to him, but this, yeah. this is where he lived, and these are his neighbors. And they see him touch this unclean man. Yes. Your most powerful people are willing to get close to whoever the church shows. Yeah. That's my job. Get close to the ones that makes everybody else uncomfortable. Yes. 
You know what they was thinking in that crowd? Jesus just touched him. And then Jesus answered him. Notice the process. Love them first. Heal them second. We got that backwards. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're trying to heal them first, and then love them. Yeah. You ain't never going to heal them mm -hmm. if you don't love them. That's That's right. Right. Yes. Faith works by love. Yes. 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 He touched him and said, I will be that clean. And immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. We need some immediately back in our lives and ministries again. We don't need to lay hands on things and wait three months for the manifestation. We need to love them and touch them and speak the word to them. And right when we say it, we see the manifestation. And then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no man, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded. Now a lot of people ain't going to like this. But when God has touched you and delivered you, you need to learn how to give. Yeah. First thing Jesus told him to do. Yeah. Go give your gift. Yes. Take your offering yes. to the church. That preacher is going to have to declare you clean. If you have men and women of God in your life showing you how to be clean and stay clean, you need to show up with money and gifts in your hand. Yes. Amen. 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 That priest will call you clean. You take him an offering. Oh, come on, church. Yep. I know everybody don't like that. Yeah. It's, it's still the word. That's give right. and it'll be given yeah. unto you. Good measure. Yeah. Press down, shake it together, and bring it over. Yeah. Men will give into your right. yes. bosom. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It says that some are sent. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't send me to Lynn by telling me to go. I'm going to Somerset too, dude. You can't send me by telling me to go. You want me to break that on down? The Bible talks about don't tell a man you have love and he needs a coat and not give him a coat. The Bible actually tells you if he needs a coat, you need to give him two or three coats so he, he don't have to wear the same thing on Thursday that he wore on Monday. That's what he said. Right. If a brother asks of you yeah. a coat, to, yeah. don't yeah. give him one. Yeah. Jesus knew that this man is clean. This man is healed. I want him blessed. I got to get the priest to declare him clean, and he needs to start sowing seed. I won't have time to preach all this, but if you look at what happens next, it says Jesus was entered into Capernaum. Go look that up. Study the word Capernaum. Mm -hmm. That's where he lived. You know that story of letting the man down through yeah. the roof? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says Jesus was at the house. Mm -hmm. You know if I'm going to invite Lynn over this evening, what am yeah. I going to say? Come, on, Come over to the house. Mm -hmm. That was his house. And if you go to the book of Luke, <laughs> this man that I'm about to read about, and I'll preach this next week, Jesus was entered into Capernaum. There came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's at in Luke, but let me see. <clears throat> Luke 7. Go to Luke, the seventh chapter. I'm going to show you something as I close, and we'll pick this up. Jesus sets free, heals, sends 
a man that everybody thought was dirty and unclean to the priest, and now a centurion approaches him, a Roman soldier. Uh, let me find where it's at. Oh, yeah. It's in Luke somewhere. You can tell I wasn't ready to go. Oh yeah, there it is. Verse 4, Luke 7, 4. When they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, He is worthy that did this. He loves our nation and hath built us a synagogue. People leave that out. This Roman soldier is approaching Jesus and the crowd gathers around and says, Jesus, help this man. He loves our nation, the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. and he built us a synagogue. This dude took his Roman centurion money mm -hmm. and built that bunch of crazy Israelites a church. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. They needed it. Come on. That's, that's, we need it, Lord. You didn't hear preachers expound no, on that part of that no. story much. You, you think today if some heathen politician come in here and builds us a new facility up on our property yeah. that I am not going to be in the face of Jesus going, you need to touch and yeah. bless and heal right. and help yeah. this man. Yeah. He yeah. built us yeah. a church. Yeah. 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 Amen. Keep blessing on him. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Jesus just told a leper to take the gifts Jesus. commanded to the priest. And now he's got the church telling him, This is the guy, Lord, that built our church. Take care of him. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You want that redneck? Everybody that has given to you and has helped you and has sowed into you and has sent you what I started out saying. Lynn can't send me by telling me to go. he got to put some gas in my truck or pay a motel or feed me or something. Yeah. That's sending me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anybody that sends you, you need to be in the face of Jesus reminding him of yeah. uh, he put gas in my truck. Yeah. He bought me Taco yeah. Bell. Yeah. He paid my yeah. motel order. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. Everybody stand. That's we'll good. go on That's into good. this day That's good. next Sunday. Amen. Get hungry for the word, church. Amen. Yes. Yeah, we took four or five little verses there and talked over an hour. Thank long. you, Jesus. All right, we're good. Imagine if all of us had meditated them verses all week long. Mm -hmm. Me talking an hour about what I got. You being able to talk an hour about what you got. Yeah, praise the Lord. Quit trying to read the Bible through in a year and impress somebody. Get you five verses and stay in those five verses for six months. Yes, that's right. After that six months, you will destroy the kingdom of darkness with those five verses. Amen. How Jesus fix that leper? He didn't quote the whole 23rd Psalm to him. He said, I, right. I will. I will. <laughs> I will. Not only can I, but I will. My word to you today is not only can he do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything you ask or think, he is very willing to do it so much that he calls it already done. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for every gift given, seed, sown, prayer, prayed, every good thought. Make us hungry and thirsty for your word again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.